My name is Oscar Merlot, and I was born in La Laguna, Honduras, the original Laguna Beach, <laughs> for reals. I am thrilled to be part of the Biola team and to join this excellent team that is here. Um, I want to start by sharing with you is this thing, where do I point it? Do I point here? Where do um, to be leading this center, and you're going to find out more about this center as the days go by, and um, it is a long title for a center. <laughs> so I would like for you guys to repeat it with me. Say, Center for the Study of the Work and Ministry of the Holy Spirit Today. Right? That's the, the longest center that we have here in campus. And I believe that this center is, is going to be a partner um, to the other centers and to the university to create, to open up um, the study, the work, and the ministry, the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Um, I want to read Acts chapter 1 verse 8 with you guys. If you could open your Bibles and... If you could stand for the scripture, can you please stand? Let us read it together. One, two, and three. Let's read. But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Before I start, I have to recognize that in front of me, I have one of the most intellectual audiences in the nation. So let me begin by asking you to please take out your cell phones. And I want you to put it in the camera option. And I want you to take a picture of yourself. Seriously. Do this. Take a picture of yourself. And once you have taken a picture of yourself... I want you to ask yourself this question. Once you have done that, you can wave your hand at me. Cool. Right. Great. I want you to ask yourself this question. What is in your life right now that might be stopping you from concentrating the next 18 minutes? And I want you to tell yourself, let's park this on the side. Yeah. So mentally, let's park whatever it is that you have in your life that right now is maybe stopping you from concentrating the next 18 minutes. Put your phones away. What I will share with you is based on my own experience and from the context of a transnational Latino Americano Evangelico. Therefore, this is my own perspective and I recognize that there are different epistemologies that see the topic that I'm going to share with you from a different perspective. I will also draw on the wisdom of two people. One, a person that I admire the most, my grandmother. And the second person that I will draw on is Ruben Archer Torrey. When I was seven years old in Honduras, my grandmother... A non-educated Honduran woman did not complete third grade because of complex social structures, but was the wisest person that I ever met. Grandma Lupita had a profound relationship with the Holy Spirit. She reflected a life that was powered by the Spirit that illuminated her community. So all over Honduras, we had people that came to the house. People that were sick came to the house. Pastors visited my grandma, and I remember being a little kid sitting next to grandma, and she would tell me, Oscarito, don't ever call me that, only grandma could call me. <laughs> Oscarito, can you please make us coffee? And I would go make coffee and return and come back, and I would hear them speaking about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes they were laughing, other times they were crying, but they looked like they were enjoying their conversation about the Holy Spirit. Grandma was a woman that demonstrated a life that was empowered by the Holy Spirit. I grew up in La Laguna, and this is a puente, a bridge. And I used to go fishing there. 
And I used to go swimming there. And sometimes we used to time the train. I'm not encouraging you to do that, right? But it was an exciting time. And living in Honduras, um, growing up till I was eight, ten years old, I came here to the United States. Um, it was a very humbling experience. This was my first crib. A Chiquita banana box. Seriously. My mom said that within like six months I tore it apart. Because I was so inquieto. That means I was restless. And I named my dog Restless actually as a matter of fact. Um, I wonder what would have happened if empty me would have got a, a hold of this. They probably would have turned it into something like this I think. You know how they renovate your homes like an MTV Crips and all that stuff, you know? They do this. So I, I actually like the one with the spaceship, you know? That's the one that I would have liked. But unfortunately, my crib was the other one that you just saw there. Um, let me get serious for a little bit. I grew up during a time when the United States feared communism. The communism forces have come into Central America and democracy was threatened. And so was the Panama Canal. Central America was, if it was to be pro-Soviet, then the rest of South America could have been divided from the United States, and that was no bueno, no bueno at all. During this time, one of the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit began to be experienced in Central America. As a matter of fact, today Central America registers 52% of the entire Christianity of the continents of the America, as the largest group of Christians in the entire continent. My grandmother was a recipient of the movement of the Holy Spirit. She loved the Holy Spirit. She was submitted to the Holy Spirit. She honored her life with the Holy Spirit. And she had a friendship with the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was about seven and a half years old, grandma was excommunicato from our old Baptist church because she was gifted with the gift of tongues. Later on in my life, when I was 18, I also received the same experience. But that's another topic. We'll park that one on the side. They told her, you could not come inside. Imagine that, that you're going to Baptist church, and they tell her, but she said this. Fine, you can't stop me from worshiping from outside and from hearing the word of God. So grandma took me, and in quietude, my dog, and we worship from the outside of the old church. And grandma said to me, Oscarito, the spirit is not inside. The spirit is not outside. The spirit is not upstairs. The spirit is not downstairs. The spirit is everywhere. And the spirit has always been everywhere. And the spirit of God is here today. And the spirit of God is there where you're at. And the spirit of God is in the peripheries, in the borders. Whatever border that you're going through, whatever situation that you're in, the spirit of God is with you. And this was a fun time for me because I was able to go to church, take my dog and worship from the outside. So I learned to worship as an outcast and also learned to worship from the margins. This is pretty interesting. I was with my grandma, the original outcast group. You know who outcast is? Man, you guys got to have a lesson on like, you know, like OG hip hop and all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> Grandmaster Flash, <laughs> let me clear my throat. No, come on. So grandma and I would sit outside and we would worship. And I looked at the people inside and they looked all sweaty. While worshiping God, my grandma and I lifted up and the wind of God came over us. And it was a wonderful experience. You see, the spirit of God has been blowing since eternity from creation during the times of the prophets, during the times of Jesus, and even during the time of the church when it was founded, and even in the life of Lyman Stewart, the Spirit of God was blowing in his life. His presence gives hope and affirms us into great works of transformation and evangelism. At Biola, we hold this principle. The words of Lyman Stewart, let it be our hope and prayer that from this place shall radiate streams of influence which will be great blessings not only to the multitude around us but also to the darkest places on the earth. 
And the Spirit of God, since the beginning of February 25th of 1908, has been blowing in different and unique ways at Biola University, and the best is yet to come. Amen? The Holy Spirit radiates His glory, the glory of the Father, so that we may illuminate amid the darkness of life. The Holy Spirit gives us Christians a new life. The Holy Spirit gives us the inspiration that we need to continue to do the works of transformation and the works of evangelization. The Holy Spirit, He who inspired the authors of the scriptures and who eliminates the readers today continues to be at work. The Spirit then is worthy of our praise. And from the standpoint of praise and worship, we must decide whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person or worthy to receive our, observa our adoration, our faith, our love, and our total surrendering to Him. Our Tory said about this particular point, the Holy Spirit is a person and a divine person. And we do not, if we do not know Him, then we are robbing a divine being of worship, of faith, of love, and surrendering. That's what R.A. Tori said, who we are about to honor. Tomorrow night we start the Numa, the Lord, the Giver of Life conference. You see, R.A. Tori wrote about the Holy Spirit more than anyone that I've come across so far. In a book called What the Bible Says, which is this book that I have here, it was so cool. This book was discovered in the 80s inside of one of the time capsules of our great schools. And in it, there were a couple of important things. One was the speech at the breaking ground of Lyman Stewart. Another were copies of our King Business magazine, which was the Christianity of today back then. And also a copy of this book that I have here. This is not the original, you know. But in this book, Oratory helps us to understand the work, the theology of the Holy Spirit. And today we honor him. He was called at a university to be an instrument of proclamation. And today God is also calling us to continue with his legacy, to proclaim the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere and through our professions and through our disciplines. The Spirit... Is named in 25 different ways in the Old and in the New Testament. But I will briefly touch on two, which is breath and wind. In Hebrew, the Spirit literally translated means as breath. The Ruah. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man and from the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. The Spirit, in Psalms 100 verse 30, the Spirit, the breath of God that creates life came into mankind. In Job chapter 34 verse 4, the Spirit of God made me the breath, the Ruach of the Almighty gave life. What significance about this is that the Spirit It's the breath, the outbreathing of God. It's the most inner life of God that breathes upon the human body and quickens the body. Matthew Henry says about this particular point, when the Lord sends His Spirit, He creates our soul. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the innermost life of God. I love what Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 7 Verse 8 through 10, it says, And I looked, and behold, there were muscles of the bones and flesh that grew on the skin and cover, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from our four winds of breath and breathe on these slain that they may live. So prophesy as he commanded me, and breathe, and breath came upon them. And they came alive, and they stood up, on their feet, and exceedingly, as a great army, they were awakened. This is what the Spirit does. It comes into our lives, and it, it, it brings the life of God into us, and it allows us to stand up. The second word 
the word wind, pneuma, which means literally a current or a breath that comes out. The significance in, in the verses that we find where pneuma is translated, it's translated about this, this movement, this wind of God that moves from creation to now and will continue. And this wind is the wind of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit himself. And this is my last point. That our Lord Jesus sent the person of the Holy Spirit that we may develop a profound relationship with the Holy Spirit. In 1 John chapter 16, verse 7, we find Jesus having to ascend in order for the Spirit to descend. And he knew this community that lived among a Greco empire, Roman empire community without the Holy Spirit. They were not going to make it. So he sent the Holy Spirit. And he came as a person, not necessarily just as a power. And in order for us to understand more the work of the Holy Spirit, we have to understand him or himself as the third person of the Trinity. This is very important. For our Tory is extremely important. He says that the descent was not merely a power. But it was the coming of the person of the Holy Spirit. Sent by Jesus and commanded by the Father. This in Pentecost was accomplished. And the Spirit not just empowered his people. But established a relationship with his community. And in a way like it was in Ezekiel. The Spirit of God descended on this community and then empowered them, not just in spirit, but also in logic. It inspired them also in wisdom. It inspired them in word and it inspired them in power. I believe that that's what the Spirit of God wants to do. Whatever the Holy Spirit, whether the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives, He wants to touch our lives in a very profound way. Tori says, if we think of the Holy Spirit in merely a power or an influence, our constant thought will be to have more of the power of the Holy Spirit. But if we think of him in biblical ways as a divine person, our thought will be, how can the Holy Spirit have more of us? So it was necessary. The descent was necessary. The ascension was necessary. Without the ascension, there will be no Holy Spirit coming. Without Gethsemane, there was no cross. Without the Father's grace and the Spirit's life, there will be no resurrection. Without the resurrection, there will be no Pentecost. Without Pentecost, there will be no Holy Spirit today. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be no church. Just dry bones. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be no life. In the word, without the Holy Spirit, there will be no great reformation. Without the Holy Spirit, there will be no great awakening. Without the Holy Spirit, our Christian universities and seminar will be dry. Without the Holy Spirit, the church will be dry. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no fullness of life. Without the Holy Spirit, my best friend, I'd rather be dead. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no life. So what I'm proposing to you, is to develop a relationship and it's a matter of decision whether you develop and you resolve yourself to this to have a relationship that is profound a one-on-one -on -one, from heart to heart with the spirit before you pursue his power let me finish with an illustration that I was thinking about last night and I was thinking about how long we live and usually we live up to a hundred years of age <laughs> those of us that eat a lot of tamales and we eat a lot of a lot of burgers and all the good food that they have here in the cafeteria we'll probably live up to a hundred and if you could stand for a little bit and let's pretend that this is your life watch this is your life here yeah please stand and listen, this is our lives. And let's say that Todd and I are going to live up to 100, right? I lived so far until I was, I'm 44 years of age. And let's call this like gone. 
It's done. Then I still got how many more years? 56 more years of my life. How old are you? I'm not sure how old you are. But imagine in your mind now that you break away all of those years. And you now have another 50 to 60 years. My question to you is, will you develop a profound relationship with the Holy Spirit? That He would be your best friend and guide you. And you will surrender and worship Him and, and give Him adoration so that the rest of your life will be bright, colorful, that will bring forth change and transformation. Let's close our eyes and let's think about the rest of our lives for the next couple of years, for the next decade, two decades, three decades. Just ask the Spirit of God, to be your friend. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.